T-Mobile and SpaceX partnership is struggling. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again, joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of Fireside. That smokiness, guys, is so good, so good, that lap song. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is kind of like a tech day, space day type of thing, and I guess mobile day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX and T-Mobile and that partnership that was formed it's really not doing great, or it's really not doing anything. We've heard nothing. Everything is extremely tight-lipped. So I wanna get into that a little bit with you guys, because a lot of you have been asking me about it. When is this going to happen so that you can take your phone and wander around outside where there's no T-Mobile coverage, there's no towers, and still be able to make a call? That's what they're working on. And they're working on it supposedly now, but, this partnership has been around now for about six months or even longer, but nothing has really happened with it. I wanna get into this a little bit with you, but before I do, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go pick them up, they are free. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoy this content even the least, throw it a thumbs up, we would really appreciate that. And if you're not subscribed, consider doing so. And if you are subscribed, Click this little button over here so when I go live when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button right down there. You can click on that. Give a dollar or two if you want. If not, that's even better. <laughs> Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be awesome. And if you're looking for more Starlink content, I have like 180 videos, I think now. 180 videos just on Starlink specific stuff. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to buy, what not to buy, what to do, what not to do. Most importantly, the why behind it all. Take a look at my Starlink playlist. Maybe I'll put a link over here or down below. And finally, if you're looking for a VPN or maybe just have a static IP address or do port forwarding, a lot of you guys are looking for that. Check out Pure VPN. They give you this ability for only a couple of dollars a month. It is really affordable. It's something that I've been using for about six, seven months. It works out great. Go check them out down below. I'll put a link. It's jchristina.com forward slash VPN. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash VPN. And you will get 15 additional percent off just by using my promo code jchristina at checkout or just using the link down below, jchristina.com forward slash VPN. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash VPN. Go check them out. So anyways, I was reading an article and this article talked about this T-Mobile thing going on. And I wanna get into this a little bit with you. So I'm gonna read through some of this, but then I'll give you my commentary on it. After that, down below in the comment area, I wanna hear from you. What are your thoughts? about this. So the article starts out, a year ago today, T-Mobile and SpaceX unveiled a partnership to combine the mobile carrier spectrum with SpaceX's low Earth orbiting satellites for more comprehensive wireless coverage, which they coined as coverage above and beyond. But what happened since the announcement? That is a really good question. After the FCC approved a proposal to help satellite providers offer wireless service from space, there has been a flurry of activity in the last few months, mainly from their rivals. In May, AT&T, T-Mobile's perennial rival, objected to the service, arguing that the proposed signals may interfere with its cellular network. Dish Network, which previously had a cozy relationship with T-Mobile after acquiring its Boost Mobile prepaid business, earlier filed a petition to get access to Starlink's 12 gigahertz spectrum. SpaceX said letting Dish on its spectrum would make its service unusable. Last week, little-known constellation operator OmniSpace filed its opposition to the FCC, arguing that SpaceX has miscalculated the amount of interference it would produce and said it would harm its own antenna system. The opposition underscored some of the key obstacles getting in the way of the ambitious project, which promised to close any coverage gaps across the U.S. and the surrounding waters. It's a noble goal, considering how many dead spots there are are in the nation, 
from the vast stretches of wilderness to the large bodies of water where cell towers can't go. The idea would be to build a separate network connected to SpaceX's Starlink low Earth orbiting satellites that would run on a swath of radio airwaves owned by T-Mobile. This network would complement T-Mobile's own more traditional cellular network. Because that frequency spectrum is already supported on many popular phones, it would make for a seamless benefit to most users once it goes live. The companies had targeted beta trials at the end of this year following the launch of Starlink version 2 satellites according to CNET. Now that is absolutely the case, but remember, there has not been a single version 2 satellite to go into outer space as of yet. Why? Because Starship hasn't left the ground. The last time they tried, they blew it up. There will be a second attempt coming soon, probably in September. Anyways, the article continues. But those version 2 satellites haven't gotten approval yet besides not leaving the ground. The company has been tight-lipped about the project and spokespeople from both companies didn't respond for comment. OmniSpace currently building its own hybrid satellite ground network to provide 5G and Internet of Things connectivity shared a presentation questioning the safety of the proposed SpaceX system. The issues include SpaceX's consideration of the potential interference from one satellite, as opposed to the impact that comes from the entire network of satellites, as well as the amount of noise interference. This weekend down here in South Florida on the Space Coast at the Kennedy Space Center, there was a couple of big events to happen. Stage one landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. Number one, SpaceX launched another 22 of their SpaceX Starlink version 2 mini satellites into orbit. That 22 brought them over a grand total of 5,000 satellites launched. That is a bunch. Just 18 hours prior to launching those 22 additional satellites, they launched the NASA's Crew-7 mission to the ISS, to the International Space Station. Live look inside Dragon Endurance right now. That's pilot and commander, Commander Jasmine Mobelli and pilot Andreas Mogensen, just monitoring the spacecraft's progress. Dragon. And we are just moments away from Dragon docking with the International Space Station. First will be a soft capture, and then there will be 12 hooks uh, deploying six at a time to create that hard capture between the vehicle and the station. Now, those four astronauts are going to be on the ISS doing a whole bunch of experiments and demonstrations, as well as doing maintenance to the spacecraft while they're there for six months or so. So even though 5,000 satellites is a lot of satellites, they're already pre-approved to deploy 12,000 satellites. So SpaceX still has another 6,000 Starlink satellites to launch. Now, they've already put in a request for clearance for an additional 30,000. Because, like I've said in the past, Elon Musk's goal is 42,000 Starlink satellites in his massive constellation. Now, will he need more than 42,000? Chances are no, because as of right now, we're seeing there's about 4,500 in operation. And look at the service that we're currently getting, not just the service here in the US, but service around the entire planet. So at 10 times that number, it's going to be amazing. Now, is it going to be 10 times the speed or 10 times less the latency or 10 times? No, it doesn't work like that. But will it be absolutely amazing? Yes. And do we think that we're going to see latencies that are very close to fiber latency when we see under 15 milliseconds and 10 milliseconds? I think they might be. Because my understanding is instead of having these satellites at 550 kilometers above Earth, I believe what I'm understanding is they're going to drop these down into the 300 kilometer area. So they're going to be even closer to Earth. Once again, less latency. As it is now, some people don't realize this, but there's not a lot of latency from your dish to the satellite. It's about two to four milliseconds. It's not a lot. So when we see milliseconds of like 35 milliseconds, 40 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds, somewhere around there, a lot of that time, a lot of that delay, a lot of that sluggishness 
is on the ground. It's from the ground stations back to the satellites, from the ground stations to the pops or the point of presence, back to the ground stations, back to the satellites and back and all of this back and back and back and forth. But as they develop more of these large version twos in space, some of them might be the size of NOx or network operation centers in space. That's going to alleviate a lot of this up and down travel and keep the information traveling around the world at the speed of light using lasers, laser communication. So there's a lot of great things that are happening as of right now, but as far as the T-Mobile and the SpaceX Starlink combination, we're not seeing it happening anytime soon. And I think a lot of this has to do with FCCs and a lot of filings from different companies, a lot of litigation that's going to happen. So it's going to have to wait. The other reason is because we're going to have to wait on those version two maxis, let's call them the large size version two satellites, because those can only get into orbit by using the Starship. But once Starship gets up there and starts delivering these things, they will be delivered by the hundreds at a time, not 22. It'll be like 200 or more at a time. And remember, the capacity of those SpaceX Starlink version twos are 4X the capacity of the version ones or 1.5s, let's call them. So that is a major difference. So every one of those version twos is equivalent to four of the version 1.5s, the current ones that are being used right now in low earth orbit. So I think exciting times are on the horizon, but we're just going to have to wait. Eventually though, I think we're going to see phones having connectivity with satellites. And now we will no longer have any dead spots on the planet. Doesn't matter if there are towers in your area or not. If there are not towers, you'll be using a satellite. And if there are towers, it will probably just fall back over to one of the towers so that it does have the faster speed that is terrestrial instead of non-terrestrial going up to satellites. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. It was kind of fun throwing this together. If you liked it, throw it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. And click this little button so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe. Stay healthy. We'll see you in the next one. Love you all.